I think this uh, mask is fogging up my glasses, but I know you've seen a million different how to do your own cotton mask tutorials out there, but we at Michael Miller Fabrics have a great new panel and I've got three awesome projects for you with this one panel, so let's get started. Well, maybe not three new ideas, but three different ways to play with this panel, like I was saying. Some really fun things, and of course we've got Halloween coming up, so I'm gonna show you how to turn one of these into a costume. And I will, of course, walk you through our very basic, our very simple mask, the way that the free instructions are available to you at michaelmillerfabrics.com. And this panel here, as you can see, also over on the design wall, is a fantastic, now this is printed on our high-density cotton, so not only is it gonna be super, soft but and wonderful against your face right but it's also going to have a higher thread count a more dense thread count so if you're wearing masks then you're doing it to protect others or yourself and so you want the higher thread count because it just makes it better and safer so we did that when we put our panel together for you and look at those lovely fantastic rectangles that are all awesome all dialed in for you there and it looks like We've got 24 different images for you, and of course you can put them back to back, like I'm gonna show you here in a moment, or you can also back them with a solid very simply as well. So like I said, please make sure you have these instructions, and these instructions are great, so you can use these with your own fabrics, but of course we're playing with our super fun Michael Miller DIY mask panel today. So let's start with the instructions as they're written. Let's follow those along, and I'm gonna show you two of my very favorites right away, cut right from the panel here. And that, of course, because I can't grow facial hair on my own, will be the I must ask you a question, mustache you a question. Anyways, and then, of course, I love the train tunnel idea. So I'm going to put these two together for you right now and show you how you also are going to do these. So let's start with our train tunnel. It'll make a little bit more sense because what we're really going to do for this is we're going to do it all um, kind of top stitch style. So I'm going to start with my iron and I'm literally going to come over and I'm going to fold down my long edges of the rectangle first and I'm basically pressing under a quarter inch seam allowance right now. Hmm. Or in this one, it's really easy, one brick worth of our wall there. Then I'm also gonna do the same to the bottom. I'm just gonna fold that up with a quarter inch seam allowance. Do your best to be consistent because we're gonna do this to both rectangles before we stitch them together. Now I'm gonna do the short sides, right? And now as I'm finishing up that second one here, let's just go back over so you can see a little bit better. And I want to make sure that I know where the top is. So here is the lettering on that one. So that is up. And then here is the train tunnel on this one. So that is up. And literally, I am just going to set one on top of the other with those raw edges ironed underneath. It couldn't be any simpler. Now, let's talk about our elastic real quick. The instructions call for two pieces cut at six inches. And I will tell you, I'm an average guy. And those six inches were pulling a little on my ears. And so maybe this time I'm gonna make mine at six and a half inches. Let's see how that feels. So anywhere between about six and probably seven and a half inches if you've got a very large, maybe or you wear a beard or you know what I'm trying to say without saying it. <laughs> okay, so let's go ahead now and I'm just gonna go ahead down here and I'm gonna find myself six and a half inches and I am going to make them both the same. I do want to make sure that they're consistent. Okay, and now I have that elastic basically, just like you see here, just set aside and waiting. So now as I'm gonna come over here to make my life super, super easy, I'm gonna start on the long side and I've got matching threads in and I'm gonna go basically right along the edge. We are top stitching and I'm starting in just a freckle from that corner there and I'm basically hanging onto it or back stitching. And now I'm gonna run a real light little stitch right along the top there as I come all the way along our first long side. Now as I come along this first long side, as I get within about a half of an inch or so from the end, I'm gonna grab a piece of elastic and I'm gonna stick it in as you can see right here, just straight in and I'm gonna bury about a quarter inch of that elastic right into that corner, right about where that needle, so it almost hits against the needle. And then I'm gonna continue sewing Sewing, sewing, sewing. And at that same marker, I'm just now pivoting 
and I'm pivoting in the fabric, I'm pivoting in the elastic, do make sure that your edges are lined up here. Don't want those to go south on you. Make any adjustments necessary. And now we're gonna sew down until we're about a half of an inch back, maybe three quarters, give yourself a little extra work, working room. And you're just gonna bring this elastic forward like this and making sure you don't get any twists or folds in it. You're just gonna lay it right in like you did before with about a good quarter inch in there. You really wanna secure your elastic so it doesn't pull out later. And then again, I'm just gonna be able to rotate that. Double checking now to make sure this bottom edge is lined up nice. And like I said, this is a very simple way. And yes, you technically could have gone wrong sides together instead of pressing first. But this is a very simple way to get the elastic in with no problems. Again, coming into another short corner union. So I'm gonna grab the second piece of elastic. I'm just gonna throw it right in here, sticking it in there. So I've got about a good quarter inch holding. I'm rotating stitching along and let's just not forget to put in that last corner so as I get within a good distance here bringing it around making sure that nothing has twisted sometimes you might have to fight for it a little bit no it's actually really easy drop that presser foot keep on going and then just finish that last corner where you started and there it is. It's that simple, all stitched out in real time, really. And now this is the first step. Now we're gonna put our pleats into them. And so basically now what we wanna do is we're gonna come down from our top edge about an inch and a half and make our first pleat. So I'm just basically folding over about a half of an inch worth down. And then I'm gonna do it again. And what I really want you to be able to see if I hold it still, you can kind of see they kind of stair step on top of each other. That's gonna line them up really nice. And I'm just gonna think about one side at a time. Of course, you could put a pin in there, but they're really easy to hang on to. So I'm just going right back over to where I was sewing. And now I'm gonna drop my needle right where it was in those threads, and I'm just gonna top stitch. And we're gonna keep this a nice straight line as I now secure these pleats and technically I'm gonna go all the way to the top again and that actually secures the elastic a second time. Now, the last thing I need to point out is just make sure that your pleats are heading in the same direction on the other side. So you probably just saw, I just kind of slid my finger across, pop that open like that, drop that down. We'll do the same on that side, making sure we have our stair steps the way we like. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and introduce it over here to the machine again. And there it is, needs a little trim. trim thread cutting. What am I? Boy, am I tongue-tied. Always tongue-tied. But you can see, there you go. Oh, fold it up. How cool is that, right? Super easy, super fast, and you saw how quickly I put that together. And that was our whole concept at Michael Miller Fabrics was creating these panels was to make your life super easy. But while we were all in the midst of sewing like crazy, oh, wait, I forgot something. Oh, oh no, no, they're right here, I got you, I got okay, you. Okay, so what I was starting to say is, in the beginning of this, when we needed lots of masks in a hurry, I just took a bunch of my basics and made rectangles, super easy and super fun, but elastic was hard to get. So what I wanted to do with it was a strap that was adjustable and also using our cotton strapping. So something like this, basically, you can, excuse the lid there for a second, Okay, you could do something like that. And then these are nice. I like these because they just wear around your neck. So let me show you how to make one of these very, very simply. And you can do basically these were seven and a half by nine inch rectangles, but it's super easy to use our fabulous mask panels as well. So if you're gonna do my style rectangle here and I'll show you how to put this strap through as well, what we're gonna now do is we're gonna take these two pieces and we're basically just gonna come over here and I'm gonna top stitch along just the long edges with a double fold because I'm gonna be leaving an opening in mind that I don't want the threads to fray after I wash these and that's one of the keys is being able to have these very, very washable. So 
So you should have two more rectangles made with both long edges, top stitched over, no raw edge there. And now we're gonna actually marry these. Do make sure that you have them right sides, you know, orientations. So that's up, this is up. But now we're gonna go ahead and take them and we're gonna marry them right sides together. And we're gonna stitch all the way across both of these short edges with at least a quarter inch seam allowance. Once the short edges are stitched together, now we're gonna go right sides back out, hit the short edges with your iron, just to make life a little bit easier. And now we're gonna finish the long edges. And what I wanna point out, because everybody has their different level of comfort and mask wearing anyways when it comes to this, technically, we're gonna run this tube, as you can see, through the sides. So if you stitch only what I'm calling the bottom closed, you could put another filter in here in the top if you really wanted to. But again, you have two layers of high density cotton, and I believe the CDC has already stated that two layers at that thread count is plenty safe for all of us. But nonetheless, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna stitch, but we're not gonna seal the very corners. We're gonna come in a half of an inch on both sides, and we're gonna stitch across there like that on the top and what I'm calling the bottom. These little openings are where we're gonna be able to run our straps through in just a moment. And that is it, that is done. We are not going to pleat these rectangles because all of it will self gather as I start to pull this in tight here and actually kind of catch it with your chin. And then that can be tied behind your head like that. And you can see it actually gathers nicely along the sides and also um, protects you, but you don't need to worry about stitching in the pleats. I also was doing this because I felt like this was fantastic for, oh my gosh, all a lot of different sizes. So that one size there with the seven and a half by nine inch rectangle seemed to work fantastically for my family. But we now have this one, our beautiful home of the brave uh, Americana ready, but we need to make our straps. So now I'm gonna show you how to make the cotton strap that's, that's super easy and very comfortable and allows it to hang around your neck that way. And so basically this is 54 inches and that's what it takes to go around my average neck, head, have enough to tie and hang on to comfortably. I tried a few with 45 and I got it, but it wasn't quite enough. So I've now gone to 54 inches and I'm actually saving the little pieces on my quilts when I'm putting the backing. This was backing from a quilt, so great strapping. Um, or I also bought a yard and a half of my beautiful hash dot as you saw in the first pile. And I actually took the whole yard and a half and I believe I got something like 32 straps or 28 straps or something like that. Anyways, now that we have this, I want you to take it, and mine is an inch and a quarter. You can do one inch if you're really crazy and you really like hard work. It, we're going to have to sew all the raw edges away on this one too. So right now I'm literally just taking and ironing this thing in half one time, just like you see. And that's going to make my life easier on my fingers as I approach the sewing machine. This is a strap. This is going to go in and out of the washer. This is going to get beat up and abused anyways. It's never going to look perfect, but of course it's always fun to learn a skill. So that's what I'm really trying to teach you here. Okay, so now as we get ready to come into the sewing machine, what I'm going to do is I'm opening up from the fold and then I'm going to tuck in one edge and I'm going to tuck in that other edge fold them back over. Oh my gosh, it's so tiny like that. But that's why we did the pre-ironing. Kind of let my fingers roll it in to get it nice and tidy, nice and organized. Easy does it. Get those first few inches started. Maybe another little finger crease. Another little finger crease. And now that I've got a couple of inches going good for myself, I'm gonna come over to the needle on the machine and I'm gonna stitch on that edge that was technically open and then I use my fingers and I just keep smoothing it back and smoothing it back. Sometimes I'll take and open it up if I need and fold it back into the fold about six inches or eight inches down the line at the head of the machine. 
fold it over and that just tucks everything in nice like that. And then I'm just going to let the machine do the work and get that top stitching done. Yes, you are correct. It does take longer to make the strap than it does to make the actual mask rectangles. But it's awesome because it does work so nice. It's comfortable. You can leave them hanging around your neck, as I said. What I don't think I said earlier was these are made straight of grain. So they're one and a quarter by 54 inches. And again, those sizes can be adjustable. The less nimble your fingers are, the wider those strips. So I've done one inch up to one and a half inches. My favorite is one and a quarter because it makes a narrow strap, but I can still sew with it. Hopefully that helps a little bit, right? And in order to put this together, I just need one large safety pin. And then the loop is going to be out the bottom end of your design. So I'm going to come in from a top end through that opening we left. And yes, I should have trimmed those threads. And then I'm going to come down and around with that safety pin and straight back up through the opening. And then what I will often do is just take the little ends here and tie a quick little knot in them. And that helps them keep from pulling out in the washer and dryer. So it's a super, super simple thing. So I showed you how to make the mask panel following the instructions that are available in the link below or over at the Michael Miller website, of course. I showed you how to make my modified version with the cool strap so that you can have it hang around your neck and have it tie and not do the pleats if that seems a little bit more comfortable or more adjustable or you don't like wearing something on your ears because you wear glasses like myself, blah, 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 blah. But now have I got a great idea because you know at holiday, one of my very favorites, Halloween is right around the corner and maybe you want to safely go trick-or-treating with some of your youngsters and you just want a simple costume, well check this out. I grabbed a couple of solids to match one of my favorite little panels which is right over here, the elephant trunk, right? Like how awesome is that? And so with that elephant trunk, I, that's right, we're going to make ears that go on. This is awesome, super easy. So just go ahead and take two different colors of gray, or we also have a dog, so you can do the black or the brown. Super fun, right? Um, cats on there as well. My different cotton couture, my high density solids from Michael Miller Fabrics to match that cute little elephant trunk that we're going to make into a costume. And so basically, I'm going to use four layers. And because I'm using four layers, I'm actually going to use a 28 millimeter rotary cutter, not the 14 millimeter shark apple cutter that I invented. I want to cut all four layers at the same time. So I'm going to take two layers of the dark fabric and then two layers of the light fabric, roughly 10 inches. And I'm just going to cut kind of this oblong teardrop shape freestyle here with my 28 millimeter rotary cutter. And then once those are all cut out, I'm just going to match one light to one dark and make sure that the orientations are facing the same directions. Head over to my sewing machine and stitch them all around, leaving that top straight edge open. Once that's done, you could nip the corners, but I'm just going to basically go ahead and turn it back right sides out. Hit it with the iron real fast. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll under that straight edge to make a top stitch. Once that top stitch is all rolled under, right, then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and stitch it over with the machine once. And then I'm going to roll that over to the interior. So my dark is my outside, my light is my inside on my ears. So I'm going to roll those over, leaving a little channel that will also be able to slide through our strapping. And when it's all said and done, basically, the next thing I found was I love to use an elastic and a little cord lock. So let's use that instead on this particular one. We're going to slide that elastic and that cord lock all through. And when it's all done, you're basically just reminder, your loop is going to be down at the bottom. You may need a safety pin to secure it. And voila, you've got an instant elephant costume, safe and ready to go out and trick or treat with your family. That's amazing. However, probably not a best way. Oh, I kind of feel like the flying nun now too. <laughs> <laughs> dating myself all over again. Hey everybody, thanks again for being here. I really, really am excited. I hope you learned a couple of fun tricks, techniques, and different ways to make your masks even more fun. Remember, stay safe, happy sewing, and we'll see you next time right here at Making It Fun.
What, are you actually still here? That's fantastic. Make sure you check out some more of my other fabulous content right here on YouTube. I think it's terrific. Please subscribe while you're there and make sure you hit that little notification bell so you don't miss another moment of the fun.